Hey everyone and welcome to Sasquatch Theory. In today's video we have Howard from North Carolina and he wanted to share his encounters that took place near Pisgah National Forest in North Carolina. Howard has experienced the activity for over 30 years and he has had a lot of time to process the strange things that he has encountered in his life. To the average listener or someone who does not believe in Bigfoot or the paranormal this may all sound far-fetched but to the people who have experienced Bigfoot activity, I think you guys will really get something out of this. Howard likes to sit out back in his yard and he uses a spotting scope and looks into the national forest while looking for Bigfoot. He has found a lot of strange structures, he has done a lot of gifting in his life and has had a lot of things gifted in return, and it sounds like he's had a lot of experiences and encounters with these beings. If you guys enjoy Sasquatch Theory, please like and subscribe, and I appreciate all the people who keep me in their prayers. I'm praying for you guys too. I pray for all the listeners, all the subscribers, and the kind people who reached out to me. If you have a Bigfoot encounter that you would like to share, please contact me at sasquatchtheory at outlook.com. And also, if you've been unsubscribed from the channel, be sure to resubscribe, hit the bell notification to stay up to date with all my future videos and I really appreciate everyone's support. All right, guys, with all of that being said, let's dive into this next Bigfoot encounter from the state of North Carolina. All right, Howard, welcome to Sasquatch Theory. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good, Miguel. Good. Good to hear from you. Yeah, good to hear from you, too. Howard, if you would, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and your Bigfoot encounters from the very beginning, please. Okay. Uh, yeah, I lived here in uh, western North Carolina, and uh, <clears throat> I'm uh, close to right in the border of Pisgah National Forest. And uh, I'm down below the parkway. Parkway is probably three or four miles above me, so it's all forest land uh, above my house. Railroad track runs past my house, so I'm north of Marion, North Carolina, in the uh, <clears throat> Limbo Gorge Wilderness area is on the, the south side of me. So it's pretty remote right in here where I live, and. Uh, we lived on a farm, my wife's farm, uh, three miles north of where I'm at now. And uh, we never had any activity up there, although now that I know what Satch Watch is, uh, I can uh, recall events that happened years ago up there uh, when I lived there, like uh, trees being pushed over and, and that sort of thing. So. <clears throat> we moved uh, down here in the early 90s uh, <clears throat> to where I'm at now, where I had all these, have all the sightings, you know. Uh, I was coon hunting at the time, uh, early 90s. I had been coon hunting a while, but uh, we had hunted this area over before I had even moved down here and uh, uh, hadn't had any problems or whatsoever so I knew the area above my house and uh, so I just go when my coon hunting buddy got too old he couldn't go anymore I just go by myself and uh, I take the dogs and over the years there I was trying out different dogs I'd be up there by myself didn't know they'd come back to the house some of them would run off you know some were good and would hunt some wouldn't I guess there's several nights spent up there by myself waiting for the dogs and nothing. So uh, <clears throat> it was one, I had two children about that time, my first two, and uh, I was in there one night uh, by myself and uh, 
uh, the the dog I had I'd gotten from Roan Mountain, Tennessee. She was a blue tick, female blue tick, uh, silent on a track. And when she would open, she would be treed. So uh, we were up in there one night, and she opened up on a ridge above me. And, of course, uh, I didn't know anything about Bigfoot at that time, so I whooped to my dogs and... uh, a little different than a Bigfoot whoop, but anyway, you know, I'd do one and a loud one. She was treed, and when I'd done that, it's something just uh, cut loose up there right above my dog. Over top of her, I could hear this just real loud, deep, deep lung uh, uh, scream, holler, yodel. It's just hard to describe. Up and down scale. And uh, when it would quit, another one to my far right would answer it in just the same dialect or same same sounds. And I thought, oh, my God, what's, what is this? You know, because uh, <clears throat> I'd heard mountain lion scream, and, you know, I've heard hunted all my life, and uh, new animals and new sounds and everything, but this was totally far out. It's like another world, from another world, so... Uh, I had an old Stevens single shot shotgun, what I carried, and it just all of a sudden I thought of that gun. I thought, man, this thing I got is totally useless up against that sound I just heard. And I thought, whatever it is, there's two of them, and I'm getting out of here. So I thought maybe the dog will keep me company while I leave. So, uh, I put about two or three shotgun shells in my mouth, never done that before. I had two or three in my hand, and I just sort of had a headlamp, spotlight, wheat light, and I just sort of backed up to the house, I mean, out of there. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, that, that sort of killed it for me. I wasn't interested in going back, not by myself anymore. Uh, it was a couple of weeks after that, my neighbor a mile up the road wanted me to go with him, and I went in above his house. So it was something probably, we were probably like three quarters of a mile or so from where that happened at. And I, I didn't tell him at the time or nothing. And uh, uh, my dog treed, and his did too. And when we whooped and started towards him, everything got quiet. And uh, I lost my dog that night. Whatever got a hold of it broke its neck. His dog we found the next day uh, three miles up the road. Uh, and it was scared to death. And uh, But uh, that, that ended my dog. So I sold all my coon hunting stuff. I was done then. I sold my, everything, a lot, my boxes, everything that I had left. I was done coon hunting. I mean, that's just, it's still bearing on my mind, you know, and I uh, I just couldn't hunt no more because I knew something was up there that shouldn't be, something wasn't right. And so uh, I started uh, uh, researching um, Bigfoot and, and stuff like that. You know, I thought, you know, at that time it was possible. So I, re- I studied everything, I guess, on the, if you can, on the computer, uh, videos, stories, BFRO, read all their reports, listened to sounds. Uh, there was a BFR report not far f- from me in a campground up next to the Blue Ridge Parkway where someone had heard the described the sound just about what I'd heard one night in a scream and yodel luck. And uh so from the reports I I figured well they're 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 around. So the next time encounter or, or what we uh encountered was uh two thousand sixteen. Uh of course my wife she was skeptic. She didn't really believe in Bigfoot or nothing until 2016 Christmas Eve 
December 24, 6 o'clock, 6 p.m., just turn, turning dark. She was preparing for the family. They were going to come in that night. We were, I don't know if she was going to, you know, cook light, something, uh, having sandwiches and soup or something, but she went out in the herb garden to uh, get some herbs or something to go in it, and uh, uh, she heard three loud wood knocks. I mean, real loud. And uh, these were about uh, maybe 100 yards, 100, 150 yards, probably 100 yards away uh, up on a ridge. Uh, and we, like I said, live right next to a railroad track, so the forest lands on the other side. There's no forest, nothing on on my side, so it's... Uh, it was above us where it was coming from, and uh, she she not only heard three loud wood knocks, uh, she heard three answer it uh, further up the holler, and she was mind spoke at that time too, and something told her don't take your eyes off the railroad, so she thought don't take my eyes off the railroad, you know, so. She was backing up towards the house, and then she turned, ran in the house, and she told my daughter, you know, what happened. She said, don't tell Dad, because she knew I researched this all the time. <clears throat> so, you know, what your youngin' will do, she came in there and told me. So, uh, by this time, it was, it was pretty dark. It was getting dark. So, I went outside, and I thought, well, I want... I'm going to listen. So I made uh, just a loud scream, best I could. And man, just immediately, just pow, pow, pow. Just three real loud, just echoed all over the valley, you know, and it just three loud knocks. And my, about that time, my daughter came out to see, well, Dad, what's, what's wrong? What are you hollering about? And I said, I just heard three knocks right there. Listen, I'm gonna do it again. I did it, and she and it happened again, and she heard it, and then there we heard three answer it up the holler to her right, like my wife had had. So uh, all three of us witnessed wood knocks that night, and and uh, my wife was a believer from then on. She she believed in them. She knew they were here. We knew they were here. So uh, I just would start about 2017. I started I'd take some food up there, peanut butter, apples, or whatever, and I'd get a knock, knock back, uh, one knock, loud one, when they would see me coming. And so <clears throat> about I guess uh, 2022, early February. I got to thinking, well, they're up there. I want to see one. And so it was winter time, February. And so from the kitchen window, I set up a, a I had binoculars and I was looking towards the mountain ridge, high up on the ridge, which from the house where I, the ridge I was looking on would probably be uh, half a mile or something like that. And uh, I just watched the top of the ridge, and and in this one location, there was this something brown started raising up right on the edge of the ridge. And it raised up, and it was the face. And that's all it showed. Just, it was just the head only, like it was peeking over the top of the ridge, and it was looking right straight at me. And I thought, man, that's weird. Uh Whatever this is, it knows I'm a watching, and it would slowly right, go back down. Just you know, just come up real slow and stay about two or three seconds and back down. And it looked like a like it had a mane around it, like sort of a brownish blonde. Looked like a lion face, more or less. So I could tell from that distance. It's hard to really, couldn't really make out facial features or anything, but it looked, uh, 
that was my first, what I would call my, my first sighting. Uh, <clears throat> anyhow, that's what really got me looking for them. So the spring of 22, uh, 2022, March, uh, I'd watch for my neighbors when I would get home from work. I'd, from from the outside on the patio where I had all my sightings from, right here at the house. I'd sit out there in the chair. I could look at the ridge closest to me, not the one far away where I saw the first one, but the ridge closest to me, it was another ridge up there. I thought, well, this is a good observation point for, for them, so I'll watch this area. And so I spend a lot of time, some time hours, just watching. <clears throat> and I would watch and spend a lot of time watching. And uh, so in April, uh, well, in March, I would see a little bit of movement around trees. Couldn't really make out what it was. It looked like something would look around trees. So I thought, I'm going to buy me a spotting scope on a tripod. And I did, and this was in by April. Uh, I saw a big reddish brown one step out from behind a tree. <clears throat> uh, face didn't have no hair on it. It looked uh, sort of more or less copper colored or whatever, but the hair was darker than the face. Uh, more of a dark red, reddish brown. I uh, had big black oval eyes, real big eyes. The eyes really sh stood out on it. The hair on it was like four to six inches long. It hung down, sort of, uh, down uh, 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 from it, you know, sort of stick out, not straight out, but sort of down, but out enough where you could, you know, you could see it shaggy and long. <clears throat> and, uh, man, my heart about stopped when I saw this. I just thought, Oh my God, they're real. I thought, my God, this thing's real. And I thought, I'm looking at it. It's right here, you know. And I thought, I'm selling this house tomorrow. I thought, we're moving. Uh, that was first. That was my first thought. Was <laughs> we ain't living here no more, you know. And then a few minutes later, I got thinking on that, and I thought. Well, they've been here over 30 years. I thought, this is probably what I heard up there that night. I was coon hunting, and I thought, you know, we we heard the knocks 2016, and and I hadn't looked for them before this, so I thought, well, I'm looking for them, now I'm saying them, you know. So uh, <clears throat> I got calmed down over it, but, you know, I kept, I really kept looking for them and just continued on and uh, day after day. So the next time I see a black one stood very on the top of the ridge and it like it had been cloaked or something and it just it just appeared. It was it just was there. This was a huge one. This thing was solid jet black and it was I would guess it's hard to tell from the top of the ridge, somewhere, well, I'm guessing 700 yards, something like that. Uh, I'm looking through a scope. Uh, I'm not sure if I got the scope this time or binoculars. I'm not sure which I had. Because uh, I use binoculars a lot of times trying to locate movement. If i seen I would get my scope out. So I'm not sure which I had. But... It looked big enough to be around 10 foot or more tall, uh, five or six foot somewhere in that across the shoulders. That's, it's very, very huge. Uh, and then about five seconds, it just it cloaked or disappeared. And that was it. Never seen that one again. It was just like it was saying, here I am, <clears throat> look at me, and then disappeared. Uh, the next one I saw was a reddish brown one. It stepped halfway out. It was peekaboo first. It stick its head like part half of its head uh, out from a tree, 
I caught that movement, and uh, it was reddish brown, had long hair, uh, four or five inches long, hung down off it. Uh, <clears throat> it could have been the one I'd seen earlier, uh, the one I said had the black eyes. I don't know uh, if it's the same one. Not could have been. Uh, I just seen the hair better on this one. Down, I saw half of just only half the face, one shoulder, an arm hanging down, and one leg, which would be its right arm, right leg, stepped out from the. From its right side, if I was looking at it, I'd be calling it the left, but it would be in its, its right side, I was saying. So uh, the next time I was scoping a ridge one evening, and I saw what, well, now we call it the perch slam. <clears throat> There's one tree, a big tree on the ridge up there. It's got a, a big, long limb that sticks out. And uh, this was one of by far of our, our best sightings because this involved my wife too and this was her first uh, visual uh, one that she saw and uh, I was scoping that evening and I seen this big old black blob or brown dark blob so I got to looking and there was one sitting on a limb and it it looked like it was chestnut brown, chestnut colored, dark brownish to me. <clears throat> and uh, at the time, I didn't know it was humped over, like it was it was sitting there bent over with, with the head down, but I couldn't tell that. I could just tell a big brown one sitting there on the limb. I could see its shoulders sticking out. Uh, I couldn't see its face or nothing. And so I hollered at my wife, said, come here, I, I see one sitting on a limb. So she she sat down there, had the scope uh, on a tripod. Tripod was sitting up on an outdoor table there. And so she sat down, and I said, I've got it zeroed in on that limb. Don't touch the scope, just look through it. So <clears throat> she looked at it for a minute, and she said, Howard, it's moving, it's moving. It raised up, and I said, "Well, what's what's it look like?" And she said, "I I can see its face," and she said, "It you know it had a, a gray, darkish gray face," and she said, "It looked like it had silver." She said, "When it raised up, it, said, it looked like it had some silver on the chest of it." Uh, she said, "Around the face, the outside of the face, the hair was dark. She had like a." dark black ring around its face, uh, hair, the head pointed up, said, she called it a grill, she said, <clears throat> it looks like a big grill is sitting there, and, uh, and she says it's, uh, it's picking something off of it, she watched it for a good bit, <clears throat> and it would reach down, uh, it would look down to its side just like a gorilla would, like monkeys or gorillas do. And it was, I don't know if it was picking lice or bugs, or whatever. She, she said it would pick something off of its fur, off underneath of its arm. And uh, and so when she got done, she went in the house and she was just amazed. And it was still sitting there when I looked at it. I watched it for a while and. and and I went in. Uh, it, was, it was almost for, right before dark, and uh, we both went. And we were just talking about what we'd seen, uh, and that was that was before the, I guess the best one. We've, I've watched that limb many times, and I've never seen anything on it after that. That was the only time. I don't know if it was a juvenile. Uh, or what it was, uh, or if it was an older one. Uh, I don't know if we just caught it off guard. It wasn't expected. I don't. It may not even know we was looking at it. Uh, and then again, it may have knew when she, she saw it. It wanted to show itself more to her. I don't know. It looked to the side and looked around. What? Look, it was 
you just look and see what there was around underneath of it. And uh, <clears throat> and that was that was by far a good one because you know it didn't jump off, didn't go nowhere, and it and we got to see it as long as we wanted to. Uh, my next one is uh, been watching one a while away. This one was seventy five yards. Okay, it seems like now they're wanting to show themselves to us, and they're coming in closer. This one's across the railroad, <clears throat> and it's about 12, 15 feet high, so they're further up the hill a little bit, so uh, all I'm saying is they're head and shoulders <clears throat> on, on this one. And it was when I spotted it, it was against the tree, sort of in some brush there. It would cloak and then it would uncloak. What I mean by that is it would just it would appear and then it would just start fading out real slow. It would just fade out and you wouldn't see nothing. And about ten, fifteen seconds later it would reappear and it would just start you could start making out a form, and then the form just got clearer and clearer, and then there was real clear. And it just it just faded in, faded out. And uh, and so I asked this one its name. And, of course, that was a mistake, I guess, because I didn't know there was one on the ridge to my left where we'd heard the wood knocks up first time in 2016 there was one apparently there right at the end of the ridge they can look out over the valley and, and uh, so that's an obvious uh, a place where the point where they can watch so, so when I asked this one its name it pushed over a huge tree I mean a big tree and that thing come crashing down and my neighbors heard it and and, and I thought okay I ain't supposed to ask that question and I didn't know if it was a female, and that was a male on the ridge, and it didn't want that was its wife or something. It didn't want me to know its name, or or if I just wasn't allowed to know what their names were or what. So <clears throat> that was a shock to me to hear that tree come down, cry, crashing down. And that one disappeared. It it after it cloak and show itself cloak after I'd asked that and the tree fell and then it was gone so uh, uh, the next evening and I don't want to really get into this right now uh, it appeared again for a few minutes and I, I it was the same one I had seen the night before. And I'd ask it, I said, well, okay, what's your leader's name? Uh, what's the big guy's name, your leader? And nothing. It disappeared. Well, that night I had a dream. And uh, uh, I was in the dream, I just was in the woods, and these Indians on horses came real fast right up on me. They said, we call his name Mojav, and they wheeled around, and they left, and I woke up. That was the end of that. I mean, I don't. I just woke up immediately, and it, I was sort of like in shock, and I thought, it sort of spoke me, you know, and I thought, my God, what was that all about? What was that dream about? What's Mojav, you know? And I thought, call his name Mojav. Call whose name Mojav? You know, what? What's this about? And then I don't know. They brought it back to my memory, or I just remembered. I thought, well, you ask them what their name was, what their leader's name was out here uh, earlier. So I got on the Google, looked that up, let's see what Mo Job was. And uh, Mo Job means the man of dreams and visions, is what it means. And it's also pronounced Mojave. And so Mojav was a leader, uh, was their leader, I guess. And I guess they 
claimed the Mojave uh, early American. They were Indians along the Colorado River. Uh, they were tribe Indians, the Mojave Indians. Anyway, I later learned that there was a there's a mo job in Tennessee and one in South Carolina and one up in Virginia. Different people uh, people told me that these Bigfoots have a chief or a leader over them overseas. So anyhow, I don't know if that just means later the name later or if that's actually the name of of the theirs. But anyway, I'm gonna go on. All right, the next time, same spot, Sparky, one I call Sparky. <clears throat> now, this is one scared the devil out of me, and up to this point, I had evidence, some evidence. I had, I've had long white hair that was attached to pieces of skin. It was four and a half inches long. Uh, I had casts where... You know where they where they run on all fours and the hand knuckle. I had cast of that. I had I had the gifts. I had the first gift they gave me at the Gifting Rock, uh, was a handful of moss I laid up on the Gifting Rock. They gifted me uh, smooth stones uh, here at the house. Uh, different things they gifted, and uh, I don't know what all I had, but. I threw all that away. I mean, was, I saw Sparky. This changed the ball game. It changed everything. And uh, what this one was now at this time, I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, see, this happened around the last of September or uh, the first of October. And uh, this was in the fall of of twenty two, and uh, and so I didn't know what what I was saying at this time. I thought it was something do something alien. I thought because we had seen. These lights up in the wood. Now I'm not. I'm just giving you right now of sightings and stuff. I haven't got into events like I glow, uh, uh, vocals, and and this all the things that they've done. Which is I've got bunches and bunches of notes from stuff that they've done and things that we've seen, heard, and sounds and stuff. But we had had for uh, two or three years there. We've been seeing eye glow in the evening. We'd watch it through uh, binoculars uh, and my children seen it. And there'd be a family of them there on, on the ridge. Some would have big eye glow, some small, some would be far apart, some would be narrow. There'd be this one it would just sparkle light, like a, it looked like a, a Christmas tree almost up there, and it was just light would just sparkle on and off all over it, just all over thing, just be a glowing. And so <clears throat> we didn't know what that was. We always questioned, you know, is, hey, is this our Bigfoot's part aliens? Is this an alien or is this a UFO? What is this thing up there, you know, in the woods? It'd be pretty much in the same place every evening, so. We had seen this one that was different from all the rest. So this evening, no, this was in the morning. This was happened in the morning. I was outside drinking coffee. I was, I was uh, looking up in there, and where I asked the one its name. Uh, this one appeared there too in that vicinity, and it had I can only like I said from my uh, vision point and across looking across the railroad up into the wood, I can only see like one from shoulders up. So this one had uh, 
sparks coming off of its head and shoulders down maybe four or five inches of shoulders down I could see in its head and this one looked like it didn't have any the other one's head was like brown brown hair that I'd seen up close and brown hair and, and just a dark skin face this one looked like it didn't have any hair at all on its head and shoulders and it was like these sparks coming off of it they were just like sparkles lights like i don't know if you can see radiation or not but i don't know what it was it just it just i didn't know what to call it uh later i talked with uh janice carter we we text and on the phone i asked her telling her about it and she says that is called shimmering uh the ones that i don't know if you know her or not but she's She's been on different shows and stuff, and uh, I was talking to her, <clears throat> and she says, yes, Bigfoot does that. She says they have that ability. Uh, she calls it putting off energy or something. They can put off energy, uh, radiate energy, and it's a, it's a radiant light. It just comes off of them, off their body, and it's coming off this one's head. So <clears throat> I knew it was the one that we had seen up there. It was unlike the rest of them. I don't know. I don't know about this. I'd heard other one or two others talk about saying something like this. So this was all new to me. Like I said, I thought it was alien at the time. I thought, this is it. I mean, that freaked me out. I, I threw every dang thing I had away. I was starting to write a book on Bigfoot. I threw that dang thing in the trash. I threw everything I had away. I just thought, I'm done. I threw my parabolics. I threw my binoculars, my scope, and everything. Since that time, <laughs> I bought it all back. But, you know, it's, I know that's crazy. It sounds weird. But when you see something like that, you're, I mean, my interest in Bigfoot was over. I didn't care nothing about seeing another Bigfoot. If that was, if Bigfoot was an alien or, or that was an alien or whatever, I thought, I don't want them here at the house. I don't want to interact with them. I don't want nothing to do with them. And I thought, if that's what I've been a feeding up there, I'm not feeding no more. You know, I thought, I'm done. And, and so, uh, like I said, later that, winter or maybe next spring i think it was the next spring 23 uh i talked with her about it and she said she talks about that in her uh, uh meetings or interviews or whatever uh she goes to these uh, conferences she talks from conferences and stuff and mentions that uh they do have that ability to do that so uh so i'm I'm sort of getting over that since I know they're they're back to being bigfoot again, so I'm back to getting binoculars and all this stuff back, like a big dummy, I guess, and I'm watching one in march twenty three It's a black bigfoot, and it's not on that ridge, it's the ridge to my right in rock cliff. <clears throat> I'm watching a rock cliff. And so I see a big black one sitting right up against the rock cliff. There's a tree right to the right of it, but it's in full view. It's sitting on a rock facing me. All I can see is it's solid black. And it's a big one. And it was, it was doing this cloaking thing. Every 10 or 15 seconds, it would cloak and I would just dis completely disappear I could see the rock cliff and everything and then it would reappear so I don't know if this is just something I do for fun or if it seen me and knew I was looking being watched or what I don't know but it changed positions while it was cloaked and when it did this it was sitting sideways on the rock 
and I could see its outline of its head. It was pointed head, no neck, big wide shoulders. I could see the right arm coming down, and it was resting on its right leg. And uh, I watched it a while. It would cloak and uncloak from that position. Now, since that time, I've I've listened to reports where people would see something, a Bigfoot, you know, be coming at them in the woods, and they could hear it coming, and they could see the brush or the ferns moving, and it would walk right past them, and they'd never see it. So... When this one had changed positions while it was in that cloak thing, I I knew that, yes, they have the ability to do that. They can walk right up to you, and you wouldn't know it. You can't see them. And they can uh, reappear. Now, some claim that they can change, they can be in light rays. If this is a, a ability they have to change the being the light raised where you can't can't see them, or they can step in to light rays or something and <clears throat> invisible. But uh, we're getting on our subject now. I, don't, I mean, I don't want to get on this, but uh, we're getting into more of a spirit level now. If if they have that ability to, because the angels in the Bible could appear and disappear. There's stories of that. So, if you're getting, going to get in on the, the the father's side or whatever, you're probably getting more on the angelic. If you're getting on the mother's side, you're probably talking about Native American Indian here in America. But we're now we're trying to define, I guess, what Bigfoot is. But I don't want I don't want to do that right now. All right, now January 24th. Uh, the 25th is a Friday evening, 4 p.m. I saw a black one on the ridge. This was this year, just the other day. Step out from behind a tree. I saw the head and shoulders. Uh, it was very tall. About 10 seconds, it was gone. <clears throat> I think I had talked to you about this one just, just the other day. I, I'd seen through binoculars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so... As far as my sightings goes, that's that's the, the sightings. As far as things we found or done, I've got that. You, is there anything on the sightings you want to ask me on that? Um, yes, I do have a few questions. What time of year were you having these encounters? Okay, all all my uh, my the very first one uh, was in I think it was February. All the laser off. Okay, in the spring, it was uh, March, April uh, is when <clears throat> it was Christmas Eve. It was December 24th. We heard the knocks, but you know you can't. We couldn't. It's dark, so we couldn't see nothing. All, all all my sightings and it's been with the laser off, uh, except except for the. Uh, one's well, yeah, it was in October too. It seemed sparky. Uh, that was in the fall of the year after the leaves had fell off. But the the other ones was in the spring of the year before the leaves come on. Okay, so you're so, you were using your spotting scope and you were able to pick them out in the woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, they would be. They'd still be in sort of open areas. I, matter of fact, that's that's what I look for. Uh, you want to find a place that's <clears throat> uh, where they're higher up than you, where, where they can look more or less down on you, or or if or look out at you from the woods. Find the open spots, uh, and then uh, I look for uh, the biggest tree I can find in the open spots something they can hide behind. And uh, they would, these ones act like they wanted, each one wanted to show themselves to me, like, you know, they were, 
you know, because we'd watch the eye glow all summer. We see that in the summer. When the leaves come on, they can't. We can't see them. They know that. Then they give us eye glow every in the evening times. So that goes on all summer long. Yeah, and going back to your old farm when you were coon hunting, why do you think they broke your dog's neck? Oh, that ha- happened here when I moved from from the farm down here. Oh, okay. Yeah, we hunted the farm too. Uh, we never we never had any uh, thing really to happen up there. I did one time when <clears throat> when I was. Uh, uh, hunting ginseng, didn't have no gun or nothing. Uh, had a tree pushed over, and then even after uh, 2016, you know, I I deer hunted up there, and I'd have uh, like trees pushed over at me. Sound like something like some people call it, like a bulldozer coming down a ridge. It's just crash popping, knocking the limbs, just not careful, you know, just. And I would think, man, that's a that'd have to be a big buck, you know. But and then I realized when it stopped and wouldn't come out, everything grew quiet. I knew what it was, and it's just like an eerie feeling come over you. Uh, you know, you're being watched and and all that all that feeling and stuff. So I would get out of there. I'd leave. Uh, that happened several times deer hunting. It, 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 as a matter of fact, just about every time I go, they start that pushing off over tree stuff and stuff like that and rock clacking, and that was their favorite thing to do. But uh, these ones were around me. The the family of them that been up there, I think there's seven or eight of them that lived in here right now. They're not here. Maybe one is in the like a call them the sentry or the one that looks out after the watcher. And then uh, back in the summer, they they came back through. I took I was taking them some. Uh, I seen eye shining one, the the one that watches from the ridge. I took some apples or something up there. I don't remember what it was. And one whistled at me, let me know that. When I just as soon as I laid them down, one whistled at me. Uh, so uh, they they know they know I know and they know my name. Oh, here's one other thing I didn't. I was coon hunting uh, right before <clears throat> right before I heard heard the one uh, open up. First time I heard the vocal, uh, I got mine spoke. I was up there. I don't know if my dogs had left that time or not. Went back to the house. Uh, I was I was up there sitting down waiting on them, and uh, I said uh, I heard this just in my mind. Uh, it's like Howard, what would you do if you saw red eye glowing over on the side of the bank? And at the time, I thought, what did I ask myself that for? I thought, why did I say my name for? Why did I even, you know, why did I use my name for? Why did I ask myself that for? And why would I want to scare myself for? I mean, all this was going through my mind, you know, like, you know, what is it with this? But anyway, I just, I answered my thoughts my own thoughts, I thought it was my own thoughts at the time. <clears throat> I said, I'd shoot it, <laughs> you know. But uh, I didn't know they were mind-speaking me, asking me that question at the time. But uh, I think the dog probably, I don't know if it had treated one of their little ones or if they were just probably out deer hunting for food or something and when them dogs went in there, and they just thought, you know, they didn't want us coming to them or coming up in there, so they just they took care of the dogs right then and there. So, uh, okay, any, any else you want to ask on that? 
Yeah, what was your closest encounter? My closest encounter? Mm-hmm. Yeah, not my best, but just closest. Yeah. Did you see well, any of them with your probably, own eyes? There's three. They're about 75 yards away. Like the first one that come down there and I asked what its name was, uh, it's more of a, a just a brown looking one. Uh, it, it, and uh, they pushed a tree over the next n- n- evening it was there and, and asked what the leader's name was, you know, that the same spot and area. And then uh, later in the, in the, in the fall, uh, the one I called Sparky was right there in that same spot. About that, Those three times was about 75 yards, something like that, from me. The rest of them I saw, like the, the big black one, the, the reddish brown one, the one I saw its, its eyes, the big eyes, and the other brown one that stepped out uh, uh, from, well, the, the first one that stepped out that, that scared me, well, the, with the big black eyes. That one stepped out to my right. The next instant, uh, was in a little different location further to the left. It stepped out behind a tree, a different tree, uh, to the left side, to my left. Be to its right, but to my left from where I'm looking. Uh, those, those ones all were probably 500, 600 yards away, something like that. The black one was on top of the ridge, a big, the big tall, what probably was alpha. Uh, it was like 700 yards to the top of that ridge, uh, away. The one I saw on the rock cliff, I'd say that one was half a mile away or so in the rock cliffs. It was big. I couldn't, I couldn't zoom in to get the features. It is uh, eyes and all. It's too far away. But, uh, yeah, I've been up in the woods and I've had them come up. Almost to me. Uh, couldn't see them, but I could hear them, hear them crashing through the brush towards me. I take them cookies and stuff and talk to them and tell them, you know, to share, them, make sure to share them and all that. And, uh, you know, I had a gifting rock up there for a while uh, that I went to. And uh, so, uh, yeah, we've had a lot of things happen around here and stuff. Can you describe the one that you call Sparky? What happened when you encountered that one? When I did what? When you encountered the Sasquatch you call Sparky, why why did you call it that? Did you see sparks? Can you describe that a yeah, little bit? Yeah, the, the lights are just like, you know what one of these sparklers are, like you use it to... Uh, Fourth of July, people use little these little hand sparklers. You light them, you know, and have sparks go. They just, they just little sparks of light only. But you know, they were. I can't describe how big, like Christmas light size, little mini lights on a Christmas tree. But they were just, they just like it would spark and come off of it. They just, it's like sparks radiating off of it from all directions, just shooting up and around and off of it. And uh, I don't know if, if they can, if this is where, how they produce an orb. I don't know. Some people connect orbs with uh, with Bigfoot. I know Janice said on one of her shows that an orb is who they are, their essence, or who they are. They can produce an orb from them that can come out and check you out and find out what who you are or what you if you're friendly or not or or whatever now that's no subject but we've had orbs you know come to our window quite often uh can look right through the blind uh or blind into the house I've, I've seen an eye in the orb before an eyeball like uh it would be amber and have a black or dot in in that, but as far as the eye glow, 
uh, we we seen the eye glow, uh, and it it can be amber, white, bluish white. I seen red one time. It was further down the ridge, and I don't know if it was one of them or another one that come in, or what. I don't know. But it was red eyed, and it switched from red. To white, just like you'd flip a light switch. It just flipped from red to white. Same position, everything. It just, it flipped it that fast. And it would look at me and then it would go out, look at me, and then they looked through one eye. Uh, and that was the only time I seen the red one. Most of all these are, are bluish white, like a LED light almost. They, they can, they can turn them on or they can dim them down real low where you can barely see them. They can turn them up to so bright, hurt your eyes, look at them. But uh, I've seen them shine through leaves on the tree. They can make them that, they can penetrate the leaves. They can penetrate your blinds and curtains over the house too if they want to look in on you. They ain't going to stop them. They can penetrate right through those things. So I've seen them close one eye. They can look at the left eye, close it, look at you from the right eye. They can look through both eyes. I mean, that's just, that's, we've seen so much of that that we get tired of looking at it. We see it all the time. So, uh, <clears throat> like I said, we've seen seven or eight sets of eyes. They've got certain spots and locations, you know, so if I knew their names, I could say, well, so-and-so's over here and so-and-so's up there, but uh, I don't know which which ones were. But the biggest the one that's wide and far apart is generally higher up than the others. The juveniles, smaller ones, is generally what comes down here around the house. And, of course, I had fed them. I quit feeding them up there. I got lazy going up there. And deer hunter had put a stand up, up in there close to my gifting rock, and that sort of run everything. So I just fed them outside here, and they'd come to the house get a jar of peanut butter every, every other night, and that went on all summer to the year of... Uh, I saw Sparky and uh, that fall and they just quit taking food at that I, I, and they knew it bothered me and I guess it bothered them but they just they wouldn't take food especially peanut butter they wouldn't take peanut butter no more and I had fed them about 85 jars probably over a year's time and uh I'd even find dew tracks out here at night where they'd come around the house. They'd have about a five-foot span, straight line, foot prints. Uh, they step in a flower bed out here. I have a 14-foot print, about six inches wide. So I think it was a juvenile. <clears throat> Most of the time, juveniles come down and get the food. And... Uh, Although my my daughter had a youngest daughter when she was little, this was back before all this started happening. This was back before 2016, before we ever heard the the wood knock. She had a friend over, and they were playing in here, dark outside, and they saw a figure go past the window. They said they said a big man walked past the window. So they didn't tell us right at that moment. She told us uh, years later about it. And so I went out there a few years back, and uh, my head comes to the bottom of the windowsill. So I'm six foot tall. So whatever she saw was eight or, or more. Walked past their head and shoulders. So they were around way back there, 
before before we didn't even know it. Uh, me and my wife knew it. Uh, and we've had eye glow out here around the yard and stuff. And they'd be out here in the summertime every evening around the barn. And I, I think I sent you a video of eye glow or circle, kind of circle around it, my glow in the, in the bushes. Uh, <clears throat> there's just been so much stuff happen. There's just so much stuff happen around here. They've been in my koi pond. Uh, they dirty it up, get the old water muddy, dirty, oily looking stuff. I'd have to drain it out. I'd find their hair in the, the filters, uh, where I filter the water. I've got some of that hair still today. Like one was two and a half inches long. Uh, and I got some of the white hairs off of them. Thing about them white hairs, you can hold it up to the light and you can't see it. One of them, one or two I got, you can't see it. But when you bring it down into a gray or dark area, you can, it's salt and pepper colored. Uh, it's just salt and pepper. It's, you know, black, white, red, black, white, like speckled. And you can hold it up into the light and that thing, you can't see it hardly. It disappears. So, there's something about their hair. I don't know. They got, but they they were in that pond that's right next to the house. They've been in it. It's four foot deep. And they use it for a bathtub, and <clears throat> so they've been in it a few times. And I've gotten hair different times. I can't keep them out of it. Yeah. So. Uh, can you describe some of the gifting and experiences that you had? What was their favorite food? What would happen with the peanut butter jars? And um, what did you find? Yeah, I sent you a picture, I think, of peanut butter jars. <clears throat> they'd bring them back. Uh, they'd bring them back and throw them over the bank. And they were all clean. Now, the lids would still be on them. And there'd be a hole in the bottom, not on the very bottom, but on the bottom side, and where they chewed it out. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know if, if one eats the whole thing or not. I've wondered about it. Uh, I used to take them up, up in the woods onto the gifting rock, and uh, some of them would take the lids, bust the lids off, and the jar would be clean. But these ones they brought back would have the hole chewed in the bottom, and uh, there is not a bit of uh, peanut butter in it. I mean, they're clean, clean, clean. And uh, you can unscrew the, the lid and the seal's still there. So I know they didn't take the lid off and then put it back on. Now, I have gifted them jars of honey and different things. They take the lid off of that. Uh, and and it'd be clean. The jar, court jar, would be clean. Uh, no honey at all in it. I mean, it was just clean, clean. And then uh, I take them. They love sardines. I take the lid off the sardines. If I didn't pop the lid, they couldn't get it. Didn't know to get it off. And they just put it. They'd leave it. But they love sardines, love mixed nuts. They love mixed nuts, love fruit. One year they came and, uh, well, I told them they could. They come down and got all our peaches. We had two or peach trees and we didn't use them and they weren't, uh, they weren't good that year. Some of them was wormy and some was rot, starting to rot. They came that night and they cleaned everything. There wasn't a peach on the tree. There wasn't one on the ground. The ground was littered with them. It was all gone. They got them all. How they hauled them off, I don't know. They didn't eat them there because there'd be a pile of seeds or something. But there wasn't no seeds. And they were just all gone. So <clears throat> that that was weird. But I'd take them all kinds of food. They, they didn't much eat sweet potatoes. They don't like green apples if they're not ripe. The fruit's not ripe. They don't eat it. They'll leave it. Uh, 
They like sweet, sweet stuff. The riper the apples the, or pears, the better. They like stuff of almost, they like it almost rotten. So, uh, the, the riper it is, the better on the fruit. Uh, any kind of sweets, cookies, can they love candy bars, Snickers bars, they'll do anything to get a Snickers bar. So, if I'm going in strange woods, if I'm if I'm out researching or where, I take some candy bars because you get one yelling and hollering and coming at you, hold you, put him out a candy bar, that changes everything. They they love candy bars. That'll it changes their mood and stuff right there. Uh, uh, what kind of um, yeah I was going to ask what kind of structures and sign have you found on the property and around the National Forest in Pisgah oh gosh well uh, when I was driving truck for public services uh, I was all over the county other county not this county but uh this is McDowell County there. I was working in Burke and I'd be driving along to see some tree structures next to the road and I'd go in there and I'd find X's and arches and you know, all just all kinds of weird stuff. Trees that was weaved in, uh, among other trees up off the ground, uh like in a horizontal position, just uh just all kinds of stuff. Push over teepee structures. Uh, I found teepee structures on their farm up there. I found a footprint about 15 inches long, six inches wide with toe prints. And uh, teepee structures up there. Now, here where I'm at, uh, I had asked these up here, I was looking at, I said, <clears throat> I've been all over this wood, so I know this wood's good. I said, make me a, a big X, a great big X. And I want it made out of big trees. And I crossed my arms showing them, demonstrating. I just talked to the woods, you know, because they're always watching me. So <clears throat> lo and behold, they built me one. Now I've got, I sent you a picture of it. Like I'm underneath the, uh, and it was up for almost a year until uh, back in the fall, uh, a deer hunter was in there, put, him, put his stand up next to it. The When you're looking at the picture, or looking at the X, the one that goes from lanes to the left side, the biggest one, the biggest tree, they laid it down the hill, and what I found the other day when I was up in there, they had picked the butt end up off the off the ground and drug it down the hill, or carried it down the hill, whichever. So they didn't just pick it up and lay it over. They got the butt end and brought it down the hill, and the small end is sticking up towards the side that's left over <laughs> of it. They took it down, and I don't know if it was because of the hunter or not, but I found uh, smaller axes uh, laid up against a the log. Uh, they're about five or six feet long. Uh, lots of axes, lots of on the ground, lots of arches, uh, hangers, trees hanging, limbs hanging. Just all kinds of stuff up in there. A lot of it, when you find it close together, like they got their own little playground, uh, stuff like, like blinds and stuff they've made, uh, ground glyphs. They, they'll put stuff on the ground. They bring them, they make stuff in our yard all around all the time. They dig around their pine trees for uh, pine beetles and stuff. It's around them. They uh, sit out there and eat that. Uh, they've made ground glyphs in their yard. Uh, they'll they'll get peeled limbs. I don't know if they peel them or squirrels, woodpeckers, or what does peeled. The the limbs completely peeled, and the wood look white, sort of whitish, or been peeled. 
uh, they'll bring them into our yard and just sort of hang them up in a tree or let them hang down or to get our attention. And uh, we find a lot of them. Yeah. Have uh, you heard of any reports around the Pisgah National Forest? Heard any reports around here? Mm -hmm. From other people and oh gosh, yeah. Bigfoot yeah. groups. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I can take you up in the mountains, a place called Roaring Creek, up in Avery County. Some hunters was up in there on the national uh, game land. Uh, deer hunting, they was in a tent. They got ran out by a big one. I mean, they left out of there. It scared them to death. They went back the next day with big guns and their tent. Everything was destroyed, tore apart. So I was going to take a BFRO friend of mine up in there. He was coming like the next day so I'd, I'd, or a day or two. So I went in, in there to <clears throat> look the area over, you know, before I... <clears throat> took him in there and I stopped down at the bottom of the mountain uh, on this road seeing a guy outside his house and I just was asking about it I said I heard a story <clears throat> about some deer hunters in there one time got run out by Bigfoot yeah yeah he's been back and I said what do you, what do you mean uh, yeah he come back here just just a few years ago, and uh, it happened again. Said he named off these guys that he knew, named them off by name, and they'd went back in there and it had run them out of there again, and they just they just ran off the mountain, left their car and all up there. So uh, that's one. There's a lot of BFRO BFRO reports of. Um, up one in Limble River, one across the road at Bruce Pine, one in Limble River at, uh, near Limble Falls. It uh, was seen standing in the river, big brown one, big grayish brown one. Uh, over here on Wiseman's View, Limble Gorge Wilderness Area, a guy had pulled in there to uh, pull off. He got like pull off where you can camp, re just remote, uh, or picnic. And there was a, a big brown one there at Brad. He caught it on a GoPro camera, had it on it. Uh, a guy from Hickory comes in south of me <clears throat> and, uh, next to the parkway, the orchard up there. He, uh, I won't give his name. Uh, he's seen a a big black one or two, or maybe a family of them. He had on on a video, and uh, he even made some casts. He had some casts, seventeen inches long. Uh, this was about seven, eight miles from me. Uh, further south. Uh, towards more towards Marion, guy seen one chasing, running down the hill. He thought was chasing some deer, uh, a big one. Uh, just all over back in Madison County, <clears throat> there's some stuff going on right now being investigated. Where uh, a housing development or something's going in there. I've been seeing sign. Uh, just all all around me from all directions, you know. There's there's sightings and stuff going on. So uh, a lot of sign everywhere you go. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it. I'd like to get up to the area one day and do some Bigfoot research. Hopefully, we can get together in the near future and yeah. um, set up camp and watch these things and see if they come in. Possibly. Yeah, be fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we had a guy come up here uh, this past fall, a friend of mine, and uh, <clears throat> uh, we had them all around. We sat out in the yard, built up a campfire, and they came down. I told them this guy was coming, and he wanted to, wanted to like to see them or talk to them. And I said, just 
come down here and raise a ruckus if you want to, and I'll cook you some hot dogs and stuff. Well, we did. I did cook out. They didn't take the hot dogs I put out there, but we had one come down off the railroad, and he had eye glow, sparkling eye glow. We had him out around the barn, had him had him all around us, and uh, he was making a racket and different sounds and stuff, and that went on. And uh, a while we was out there after about midnight, and when the guy got ready to go. He said, well, we're going to have to pack it up. We're going to have to go. We'd play some music, and we'd done did, uh, uh, different calls or, and different things. And uh, it acted like it made them sad when they had to go. I started howling, crying, howling and stuff. So that was, that was sort of funny. Uh, but... Uh, this winter, I haven't haven't seen them much. Seen seen that one the other day up there, and it's just it's been sort of sort of dead around here in the winter time. I'm hoping you know in the spring they'll be back and start picking up. We did have a incident happen right next door uh, the other day. Uh, Neighbor's dogs wouldn't come this way. She called my wife. Said your your uh, motion light was on at ten o'clock. And said I was out walking the dogs and they wouldn't come your way. She said something they could smell something and they were afraid. And that had never happened before uh, over the years. And so uh, I'd went up there Saturday on the railroad taking my grandson. There's a cemetery close by and I was going to take him up there and show him where his great grandpa was buried, my my dad and uh, there was a deer laying on the railroad track and so I walked, we walked down there and I pulled it off to the side and uh, went back up there yesterday and uh, there was a place had been eating on it, but the hair had been a lot of been pulled off of the deer, pulled off from around it. And down in the woods was there was two round look like beds, like something had laid laid in them beds, and and the hair had been carried down there and placed around on the ground on in those beds, like. So I'm watching it right now. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. If they gifted it to me, or if they're sitting around down there garden it, waiting for it to spoil and rot before they eat it, or if they're going to carry it off, or what's if they're gardening it, keep coyotes from getting it, or what? I don't know what's going on with that deer. Yeah, that is I strange. I hope they didn't gift it to me. I don't want. It. But uh, anyway. Yeah, it every, seems every like. Um, it seems like people naturally think, oh, there's not enough woods on the East Coast because they're thinking of like New York City, Boston, Maryland, yeah. things like that. Yeah. But if you actually look at North Carolina on a map, Tennessee, South Carolina, yeah. Georgia, there is a ton of forest all the way from New York, all the way down yeah. the East Coast. And um, yeah. it's it's huge. I mean, I thought there was a lot of forest here in the Midwest, but that's a ton of woods. Yeah, they are. Sure is. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, they, there's a lot all down the park, Blue Ridge Parkway, uh, Mount Mitchell, going down through there towards Asheville, goes all the way into Cherokee. Man, there's tons of forest land down through there, remote area, uh, plenty of area for for them to live. But uh, they're getting into more rural areas and urban areas and stuff. Uh, I can take you places around Lake James where there's developments all around Lake James and they're, you know, down in the woods and people's got little, own little patches of woods and all around their houses are these structures, teepee structures or pushovers where they're leaning up into the trees, arches. It's just lettered with, and they don't have a clue what it is. They don't know what lives there, and 
it's hilarious. And uh, I can show you stuff that just blow your mind with houses all around. And uh, I can even take you to a, a town and show you next to a cemetery, too, places where just a patch of woods, and they came in on like a tree line into there probably at night uh, where they just come in there and tear up jack with trees and, and stuff and take them out of the ground and stand roots and all up in the trees and just crazy stuff. Uh, yeah, it's it's more, it's getting to be, I think there's more of them. I think there's thousands of them. I think there's because these, I got some here. But we got some up the road towards the farm and up in there where he used to live. Like uh, a guy was seeing them same time down seven or eight miles, and some big ones down there. They're just scattered out. They're all over. Yeah, there's clans and, and tribes multiply, all over. As they multiply, they're going in more towards towns and or communities they're just they're living in small patches of woods small areas yeah, uh, yeah and if they're able to so, cloak they're able to get in any area and i can confirm that they can cloak just because i've had experiences myself one time i was sitting yeah. in a chair out in the woods waiting to see if they had come back and i kept hearing like little sticks break for about two weeks well i'd made a trail yeah. prior to that with a leaf blower and i hadn't used yeah. it but i was thinking man i'm gonna sneak down there and see what this is maybe i'll see something i had my crocs on and i was sneaking down the trail real quiet like well yeah. when i got down the ridge towards the creek bottom in the woods i didn't see anything and all of a sudden i heard this loud grunt it was just like a big old buck or maybe a bear yeah. that's what i thought just brrrr. and i looked to my right and i saw this brown figure i didn't get a good look at it but when i saw him after he grunted he blew out steam out of his nostrils because it was early in the morning you could just see two big clouds of steam blow and yeah. i was looking at him and he just like turned to dust it looked like somebody threw sand up in the air and it just like blew off in the wind so i was thinking man yeah. maybe it, <laughs> he was super fast like flash or he just disappeared right after he did that i heard loud rapid knocks to my left because i saw him to my right and it was just like it was trying trying to um distract me another yeah. time was in the mark twain national forest we had bigfoot activity there right when it got dark they started knocking and we were looking around the woods the whole day. We were sitting in the yard with the campfire talking. We never saw them, but right when it got dark, they did some loud knocks and it was just like they were there the whole time, but we never saw them. And after that, yeah. we were capturing audio on the recorder. We can hear them every night, bipedal footsteps, ch -ch 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 -ch, walking through the woods. Well, yeah. it was during the day. It was a nice, bright, sunny day, probably around 11 or noon. And I looked into the woods because I thought I heard something and it was bipedal footsteps about 40 yards into the woods. And this is in the winter time. So you can see real far in there. I didn't see yeah. nothing, but I could hear the bipedal footsteps like a lumberjack walking through the woods. How about that? Yeah. They can walk up and pick you on the shoulder and you, you turn around and you don't say nothing. I mean, that's happened. Different people said that's happened to them. And, and, uh, you know, they'll have a sighting, and they said it disappeared, and I guessed it left. But, you know, I question whether they left or not. I mean, they can disappear and still be there. And uh, and so, you know, you wonder, well, did they really leave or did they just cloak, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know... When you have a sighting, you think, well, I just seen one right over here. That don't mean it ain't still there. Uh, uh, Janice Carter's pretty good at that. I mean, uh, telling about this. Um, she said, you know, you can one cloaks if you walk up to it, you walk into it, there's like a block wall if you used to run into one. And it's standing there and you didn't see it. Uh, it's still there. You can't see it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they do it. I don't know. Uh, you know, that's a... Uh, yeah. I found it more well, interesting. 
I found it more I, interesting whenever I thought they were just some lost primate out there and they had the yeah. ability to like outrun us and hide really yeah. good. But once you start experiencing yeah. the orbs, the cloaking and the strange things, it just changes everything. You know, I, I thought it was cooler yeah. when they were a lost primate. <laughs> they have a uh, spiritual abilities, you know, like, uh, the infrasound, they can, they're, they're, they're orbs, they're penetrating eye glow, they can, they can generate energy, uh, the mind speak, they can do that, uh, they can talk to you, one talked to me back in, uh, 4th of July this year, I'll tell about that in a minute, uh, they have, uh, they have that ability to cloak, to appear and disappear. So they have God-given abilities that, you know, people don't have. Although we might have had it at one time before the fall of man in Genesis. Because Job, in the book of Job, it talks about, you know, to ask the, the beasts and they should tell thee and ask the, the birds of I mean, the beast would teach thee, and uh, that's the the birds they'll tell thee, and that's over in Job chapter twelve, and uh, and uh, so you know you wonder, and ask the earth, and it'll teach thee. Uh, did we lose communication with with animals and with the nature and the earth? No, did we lose? ability to communicate that we once had which i think we did we lost it through the fall so what abilities we had it uh like adam had at that, that time he didn't have afterwards so uh it's like all all the creation and uh, all the animals is out there you know each one has a different ability and all you know god give each one different gifts and whatever things it needs to survive and you know it give a turtle a shell and a porcupine its spines and a skunk its scent and you know on and on and on so whatever these things are if they're even if they're a hybrid between angel and uh, uh, mankind or 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 whatever or if it was just created by a God, uh, whatever. Uh, he's one that, that's where the gifts and the th- abilities and the things come from. So, uh, go back to the, the, the speaking part. Uh, I've been down Nag's Head one summer, come in, uh, I had a, I hurt my knees, I fell, to take my boat out of water and I come in about 12 o'clock midnight and went to sleep and this one was mine spoke, speaking me I think it was a female and she said is all well is all well is all well it just kept on and on and on man that woke me up I just thought why does it keep asking me if all is well and you know I'd been feeding them good and stuff up to that time and we've been going awake and uh finally i said yeah i was always well and it it quit uh well july uh fourth of july this year uh it was about 9 30 we're sitting around the table me and my wife and she says Is that wood knocks and i said no nah, it's too many of them uh, they're shooting fireworks off. So I went off outside and sat on the tailgate of the truck. And uh, my truck wasn't up under the carport. It was sort of backed up more toward the outbuilding. And I sat there in the dark and listening. And it was bang, bang, pow, pow, you know. And I couldn't see nothing because further on up the road. And... Uh, patch of trees on out from my barn and area from the direction it's coming from so I couldn't say anything so I was sitting there listening and sat there about five or ten minutes started to get up as soon as I started to get up uh sounded sort of like more of a female voice uh 
It's like that Ron Moorhead chatter, or the females chattering. Uh, just uh, uh, it sounded like winding one of them cassette tapes backwards, just you know, up and down, just uh, real fast chatter, and and I felt like. I couldn't understand what I was saying. I just felt like she was upset. She was there, uh, seen me and come out there, and she was upset about this firework. Didn't know what that sound was. What that going? What sounded like, you know, big bottle rockets or big ones going off. And uh, of course, I call them bugger. I don't know their names, but I call them all bugger. I said. Uh, Bugger, calm down. Don't worry about it. It's just fireworks. They're not going to hurt you. You know, it'll, they're celebrating as fireworks, and they're going to stop here in just a little bit. Well, she she didn't say no more. I, that was the end of that. But I got to hear that first. You know, what you'd hear on tape, I, I actually got verbally got, that wasn't in the mind either. That was, that was actual speaking. And uh, that was really unique, and I, I it didn't scare me or nothing. I was just real bold and just myself, because you know I'm used to them and they're used to me, and I knew what it was. And I come back in the house and I thought, my goodness, man, you just talked to a bigfoot. You know, it just it sort of hit me. Or, I realized after I come back in the house, I thought, I was sort of in awe by the whole thing, you know, and uh, that I heard one and spoke to it and and all that. So uh, that that was uh, something. They have their own, you know, that's their language. Uh, I've heard... Uh, one man spoke me one time and took two jars up in the winter time, put under a, a log up there or stump. And uh, as I was leaving, one man spoke me and, and it was just real deep, low, guttural. Some people call him a growl, but it was like, thank you, Howard, like that, just real deep, low. Because they say they don't have vocal cords, they they use they speak from a diaphragm deep in the throat. That's why it's, everything sounds sort of like a or a growl. Like a lot of people have been spoke to, and they said they growled at me. It scared them to death. When they they speak uh, the the males and the older ones, they have more of a deep growl, guttural sound uh, when they do talk. And I think the females or maybe the young juveniles or something's got more of a higher pitch. Uh, and we heard that one night when we came home, what you call what they call the Ohio hat. We came in about 8.31 one night, I think from Walmart or something. We come in in uh, September somewhere. I think it was September. <clears throat> I don't know if that is a mating call or a mournful call. It sounded mournful. Uh, and it wasn't very far away. It was, just, it was just right across the railroad track from us, and it was just a few yards up in there, maybe 60, 70 yards, 75, I don't know. It wasn't very far. And... Uh, <clears throat> We thought, me and my wife thought it was a female because it would start out, it'd go up scale and then it'd come down mournful scale. Uh, it'd last about, uh, let's see, I'm thinking it was, uh, it did it seven times in a row. It lasted about seconds, nine seconds each, about nine seconds long. But the last time it did it, on the seventh time, it was a whoop. It had a long whoop right behind it. 
and that gave it a why. I mean, we knew exactly what it was when it did that. We'd heard whoops, and they'll answer me. I don't know. I'll go out at night and say, bugger, are you up there? And they'll give a, either a whoop or a knock, one, answer back. They don't do it all the time, but sometimes they do. But uh, that night, that shook us up. It caught us off guard, and that was real spooky because it's so close and it's so loud. It was two or three times louder, three times louder maybe than that one on Ohio house because it was right, right on us. Of course, there wasn't no dog barking. There's a dog barking in it, that one, but everything was quiet except for that, and she was loud, but it sounded more of a female tone to it. It wasn't as deep a tone as in the high howl and that you hear. It's just more of a higher pitched. And, uh, Howard, have you ever had any um, ghost encounters? Have you ever seen any spirits prior to your Bigfoot encounters or after? Have I seen what? Have you ever seen any ghosts, anything like that, any entities? Oh, ghosts? Mm-hmm. No. Uh, my wife's heard a metallic sound in the house. Now, <clears throat> I believe the orb can, you know, I I watched out on the killing field that you, you had, that one. That that one, it looked like it was an orb in the daytime. Was, was that right? Was that correct? Mm-hmm. Where the deer and the coon turned and turned around and left? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you had a dark one, and then you had a one like a daytime one, where it showed. I think it picked it up in the daytime or something. But I don't know how you got the you used a dark filter or or what it was. But the same place anyway. Uh, it showed that orb coming down. Uh, I think they can follow. I think they're around in the daytime. You just can't see them. Orbs everywhere. You can't see them in the day, but they're around. But I think they can follow you in the house. Uh, I know they've been in the house because they've been in the bathroom. They followed me from bathroom to bedroom, and the dog would growl because you hear, you could hear the foot, uh, you could hear the floor crack creaking. Uh, and I know they've been in the house because they've pulled tricks. They've put summertime, they would. Uh, <clears throat> we'd have squash outside on the patio table, you know, where we'd gather in the, the vegetables and which lay them out there. We found a couple of them under our kitchen sink down underneath. And those doors stayed closed and there wasn't nobody around to put them in there. And we found gravel in the kitchen sink at the same time and we don't know how that got there or how the squash got down under the kitchen sink. But there's, and we see orb like in in a room at night uh, for just a brief second. Uh, we've seen them, they come to the window a lot, look through the window blinds, just uh, see a, a shape of an eye, eye glow, bright eye glow like a check on you. Emotion lights, they turn them on and off. But they, they don't have to be around close. They can do it. They, they'll turn motion lights on, on and off all night long. And uh, they can control anything that's got a sensor. They can control it. It don't matter. I got a friend that they're turning his uh, security system on in the middle of the night. And they'll call, say, oh, your security system's on, and, you know, he'll look around and nothing. Uh, he did find an orb outside his window that night on the out, outdoor camera. Uh, the smoke alarm, battery powered, it's got a sensor. It would go off in the middle of the night, and so... Uh, they can control anything that's got a sensor. Game camera, they can turn that game camera off, walk right past it, turn it back on, 
if they want the energy in the batteries, they can get it. They'll take it out of your cell phone, your watch, your game cam. They'll pull the energy out, and they can put or they can charge it back. Uh, I can't tell you about the the expedition, but I've heard I know a guy that, that does expeditions, and he told me about a. There was some on there that their cell phone it drained the battery. <clears throat> while others it charged the battery on them, charged their phones up. So they have this ability also. Besides all this other weird stuff, they can they can draw energy. I think from power lines. They can get it from crystals, from rocks. It's rocks that put off energy, like uh, quartz and different kinds of rocks that have energy. They can draw energy from the ground, the earth. They can draw energy from power lines, from batteries. They can turn your anything electronic off, or they can turn it on. And we know this from uh, <clears throat> from experience. And uh, uh, I've got a, f a friend and this other friend that these two friends. They'll put up battery-powered motion lights out and around the woods and they'll say turn on number one and it'll come on turn on number five and it'll come on turn number one off and it'll go off and they can activate them just by you asking them to and this has happened on numerous times and by different people told me this so they can activate <clears throat> Anything that's got a sensor, no matter what it is, they can. If it's electrical or got a battery or electric to it, how they do it, I don't know. But this is sort of on a <clears throat> an alien level, you know. They, uh, uh, UFOs can stop a car; they can drain a battery, and they've stopped cars before and abducted people. So, uh, and then aliens, also UFOs, can appear or disappear. I think that's why a lot of people try to connect Bigfoot to them. I don't think they're connected. I think uh, I think uh, aliens try to control some Bigfoot and other ones they cannot. Just like there's two classes of them. You know, there's the good and there's the bad. There's the uh, there's a, there even a class of red eye Bigfoot that's evil or bad, and the white and the amber colored eyed ones are, are not. But uh, they have the ability to <clears throat> uh, mess with electronics and the, the energy. They can pull energy or they can create energy and I don't know or send it forth and recharge something but uh or cause something to go off, activate. They can activate stuff. So uh I don't know uh I I don't know how they do that, but you know, we know that they do or can and have. Uh it's it's really weird. I mean, we're still, we're all still learning from it, and uh, it's just amazing. It's amazing what they can do. Yeah, it so absolutely we've just, is. I, we've just learned this. I mean, I've just learned this about the smoke alarm and the security system. This happened not too long back. I don't give nobody's name or area or nothing. I was asked not to. But, uh we we know this happened. This has happened recent this past month, and has the guy pretty spoked up about it now. But uh, <clears throat> there's stuff going on all the time, and we're learning more about them all the time, and they're just full of surprises. I think. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Howard, I think we're getting towards the end of the interview, but I appreciate you for sharing all your encounters and experiences, your theories, your knowledge, and um, it sounds like a really good area, and I've heard of people having Bigfoot encounters in the Pisgah National Forest myself, so you're not alone, my friend. Okay, yeah, I enjoy it, and uh, like it's been going 30 years, and so we're 
we're still having stuff happen, but uh, it's good talking to you. Thank you. Yeah, it was good talking to you. Have a good day, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. All right, Howard, thank you very much for sharing your encounters and experiences. And this was the second interview that we did, and it was the exact same as the first time he explained everything. So I do believe you. I believe you had these experiences and the cloaking, the strange lights, and all the phenomenon that took place around the National Forest and your property. You know, if I didn't have these experiences myself, I would be raising an eyebrow for sure. But being that I did have these experiences that have taken place in my life, I was a lot more open-minded towards Howard's encounters and experiences. So I know that the average listener, the people that have not experienced Bigfoot activity multiple times, don't really believe a lot of this stuff. But you have to remain open-minded just because there's a lot of stuff out there that we don't know about, a lot of mysteries in the universe. And you have to think, why hasn't somebody brought in a body? Where are all the bones? Why are so many people seeing Sasquatch? There is something happening out there in the forest, and um, I'm out here to find out what the heck it is. If you guys enjoyed this interview, please like and subscribe. And if you have a Bigfoot encounter that you would like to share on the channel, please contact me sometime. I would really like to hear about it. All right, guys, that's all we have for today, and I appreciate everyone for tuning in. Be safe out there, and take care, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.